Well, with this week's Cardiology Countdown, following the very exciting ACC, we'll have two articles from Jack, and one starting from the European Heart Journal about the CHARISMA study in the genetic substudy. The investigators, including Deepak Bhatt, uh, looked at the 2C19 polymorphisms, which influence clopidogrel metabolism, to see whether they were related to outcomes in a stable outpatient uh, group of patients with coronary disease or multiple risk factors. And interestingly, uh, in a 5,000 patient study, they were unable to see any relationship of the um, reduced function 2C19 alleles and ischemic outcomes. Interestingly, they saw slightly less bleeding in those who had reduced function alleles, suggesting that it may be active in terms of the clopidogrel antiplatelet effect. Uh, and the gain of function alleles did not appear to predict bleeding or outcomes. And so an interesting counterbalance to much of the data that has been instented in acute coronary syndrome patients, saying that this is part of the story but not the whole story in determining outcomes in patients treated with clopidogrel. The next two studies both come from Jack, and the first one looks at a new uh, metric, the residual syntax score. Uh, this is a publication from the ACUITY trial where they looked at the unrevascularized territory and calculated the syntax score post-PCI and uh, seemingly um, clearly based on pathophysiology, the more and the higher this residual syntax score, the worse outcomes were seen at 30 days and one year. And so this is a nice step forward to try and quantify uh, the level of residual ischemia that could potentially help guide further intervention in these patients. And then finally, in Jack again, we have a very interesting article about TAVR, but thinking about the mitral valve. And this is obviously in patients with valvular disease, often uh, mitral valve disease uh, can accompany the aortic valve disease. And so they looked at patients with moderate or severe mitral regurgitation compared to those without or with mild MR and found that outcomes were worse if you had significant mitral disease. But following TAVR, more than half of the patients had improvement in their mitral regurgitation. And this was seen in patients who um, did not have pulmonary hypertension, were seen to have functional MR, or those without uh, AFib as markers of more severe and longstanding MR. And so it gives added um, hope that uh, the multivalvular disease may improve following intervention on the aortic valve. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.